If I haven't met you guys, uh, my name is John, and uh, it's a joy to get to be with you guys. I have been, I don't know what the word is, like just uh, tender, borderline weepsy this whole past week. I've just been like nostalgic of all that God has done. You know, over the past two and a half years, guys, this is amazing what the Lord has done. And some of you are just stepping into this story. You're brand new. Like, this is week one. Well, I want you to know what you're like joining today. This is something that God is doing. And today is going to help catch you up uh, in many ways to the story that, that God has been writing in and through this church. And so today is, is in many ways the checker flag of this experience, of this journey that we've called Never the Same. Real quick, show of hands, how many of you were with us as we started this two-year generosity journey way back when? There's a few of you. Yeah, like not many of you. That's kind of how it's gone. It's been crazy what God has done. And, and we used to be a church that was in a high school. Do you guys remember this? We were a portable church. And some of you remember that. We would park in that parking lot. And it was a two-mile walk to the auditorium. Do you remember that? And, and you'd get lost and you'd get discouraged and you'd see lockers and it smelled weird. But you'd eventually find your seat and God showed up. Your kids were like three miles away at the other end of the building. You wondered if you'd ever see them again. And, uh, and you did. And before that, we were at a middle school. How many of you guys remember the middle school days? At Stratford Middle School, yeah, like four of us. And uh, that was crazy, right? We set everything up, tore everything down. Our whole church, now from a facility standpoint, was in trailers, three trailers, until one got stolen, right? I mean, this has been an amazing journey of faith and of God's faithfulness. The, the foundational verse for Never the Same comes from 2 Corinthians 3.18. I love this verse. Some of us have grown to love it. We are being changed, it says. This isn't the story of one person. This is the story of a community. We, the people of God, we are being changed. Like we are works in progress. We are being changed. And sometimes that can be a bad thing if we're being changed into something that isn't good. But this is a really good thing. We are being changed, why? Into the image, into his image, into the image of Christ with ever-increasing glory. This has been a vision of transformation. Some of you are brand new to church. You're not even sure how you got here today or you just scrolled through it on Facebook. You're like, ah, I don't know what this is. That music sounds good. You're still watching. Hang in there. And uh, if you're not a church person or you're just kicking the tires, uh, you're exploring who Jesus might be, here, here's what I know about you. Uh, and, and it's that you're into stories of transformation. You really are. This is just a human thing. Like no matter what you believe, no matter what you think, every single one of us, if I were to poll you on what are your top five favorite stories you've read or watched, I can almost promise you those are going to be stories of transformation where someone or something or a team was transformed. Uh, let me give you some examples. I think you've seen some of these stories. I came across this movie this summer uh, because of my daughter's. The, the movie is called Soul Surfer. Have you seen this? Um, it's an amazing story of transformation, but if you're scared of o the ocean and of sharks, don't watch it. Uh, that will not help you. This girl, she got her arm bitten off by a shark. I'm just going to keep moving because it kind of scares me. But it's this amazing story of transformation. Uh, another amazing movie, I think Pixar did this a number of years ago. The story is Up. Do you guys remember this movie? This was such a show of hands. This is interactive. Don't leave me up. Or yes, such a good movie. Uh, I loved uh, Arnold the Boy Scout. You guys remember the Golden Retriever? Anyone remember his name, Doug? You remember, I, I'm very similar to Doug, so I, I really love that. Squirrel, right? Like, I get distracted really easy. That's why I try to write everything down. Otherwise, who knows what I'm going to talk about and waste an hour of your life. So I love Doug. And, and this story was so great. It's of the old guy, Carl. He, he was trying to find Paradise Falls and in the process found something even better. That was a better version of himself. It's a story of transformation. One of my favorites, though, is the story uh, Remember the Titans. You guys ever see this movie? Oh, my gosh, so good. And uh, some, one of you almost gave your first amen in church. It almost happened. You were on the brink there. And it's a cra this story is amazing. They, they go to training camp as two, but they come back as one. And I actually have a little movie clip. I think you're going to enjoy this. Let's go ahead and take a look. Whatever it is, it ain't blocking. Give me a break. You yeah. want a break? I'll give you a break. Me and Julius. Wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. Just let, let them in. Get the rev once, just one time. I swear to God, I'm gonna hit you so hard. By the time you come to, ooh boy, you're gonna need a new haircut. You understand me? <clears throat> <laughs> let's play, fellas. Oh, Another right ball. Let's run it again. Let's go. Let's go. Oh, 
with me. You all right, Big Petey? You all right? You really stuck him, Campbell. Yeah, I love me a little contact, Petey. This is left side. Wrong side. Left side. Left side. Left side. Your left side and your strong side on the count of three. One, two, three. Left side. Oh, isn't that fun? That's good. That's good. We love that movie. We love it. Why do we love it? It's way beyond football. I mean, we love the theme of that movie. We love seeing two become one. We love seeing lives in that movie transformed. That clip this week, I was watching in my office. I'm getting goosebumps, tears are welling up. And I was, what is that? It's transformation. It's transformation. We are drawn to these stories. We love these stories. We, we read these stories. We watch these stories. But here's the question. Are you living that story? Are, are we living stories of transformation? And the reason we have so much to celebrate today is because in a large part, the answer is, is yeah. A whole bunch of you guys have been living a story of transformation over these past two and a half years. And at the same time today, I want to invite you to really consider this question. How do we live or continue to live stories of transformation? What a simple question, but a really, really important question. How do we, how does the person sitting in your chair, the person sitting on your couch right now online or at your watch party, how do we live or continue to live stories of transformation? We're going to look at a really incredible passage of scripture from God's word today, Genesis chapter 12. If you have a Bible, you can open up to it. Genesis is really easy to find. All right, it's the first one. All right, so uh, if, you, if you get a little beyond that, you missed it. Genesis chapter 12. There's a man by the name of Abram who, uh, his name was later changed to Abraham. I don't know if you guys have heard of him before. He's a pretty big deal. Uh, and so we're, we're just going to look at just a, just a sliver of his story. I highly recommend you guys check his story out in your free time this week, assuming that any of us have free time. But you should read it. All right, so Genesis chapter 12, I'm going to read verse 1 through 4, and we're going to make some observations as we really explore this question of how do we live or continue to live stories of transformation. This is what God's word says. The Lord had said to Abram, Go from your country, your people, and your father's household to the land I will show you. I will make you into a great nation, and I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you, I will curse. And all the peoples of the earth will be blessed through you. And it says this, so Abram went. So currently in this moment, Abram is living, living in the city of Ur. Everyone say Ur. 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 It's kind of fun to say, right? So it's an ancient city, pretty big city, very influential city way, way back in the day. Abram was a business uh, a guy. He was in the business community. These aren't like fake people. No, when we open up God's word, this is a real guy. I mean, he woke up every morning tired like you woke up this morning, even though you got an extra hour of sleep. He woke up every morning with, with pressure. He woke up every morning feeling like, i got to provide. He woke up every morning asking some of the big questions of life, just like you. And he's a real guy living in a real city at a real time. The city is Ur. And God says, I want you to go from Ur. I'm inviting you into something greater. And he says, man, you're going to have to leave everything you know, the familiar, the things that you can predict. Like, you know the language there. You know the shortcuts there. You got that favorite coffee shop there. I don't know if they drink coffee back in there, but let's just work with me. Right? He's just saying, you're going to have to leave all of that. And it says, so Abram went. This is amazing. He went, as the Lord had told him. How do we live or continue to live stories of transformation? It's two things. I would consider these the two irreducible minimums of transformation. Two things. The first is this, your faith. How do you live? A story of transformation, some of you are doing that. How do you continue? Because it's never over, not until Christ returns or until you're taken to heaven. How do we continue to live stories of transformation? Well, first, it is your faith. It's your faith. There's two phrases in these four verses we can't miss as we carefully study this. Genesis 12, verse 1, this first phrase, I have it bolded and underlined. When I get to it, I want you to say it loudly. All right, here we go. The Lord had said to Abram, go from. <laughs> yeah, pretty good, go from. What is that? Well, this is all about faith. Go from. Oh, and by the way, Abram, um, I want you to go from everything that you know to a land that I, I will show you. All right, let's just like step into his story for a second. How many of you are like, yeah, that makes sense. 
you put the for sale sign in the yard? Or how many of you were like, no, I need some more detail, right? How many of you were like, uh, God, could you like, give me a little more instruction on this? <coughs> this is not making any sense. But yet God is inviting him to a greater level of faith. Go from. How do we live a story of transformation? Well, it's about your faith, and I think that's good news. It's really good news. Like the requirement isn't your network. It's not your net worth. It's not your education. And some of you are really educated. Some of us aren't super educated. So maybe that's just good news for a couple of us. Right? It's none of those things. Like the heroes of our faith, we look at like what were the two components of their transformational story. And there's a lot of things involved, but the two absolutely involved. The first is faith. It's faith. Hebrews 11 defines it this way. Faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. And we love that verse and we hate that verse. You love texting that verse to a friend, right? Your buddy right now, he, he's in his own er, and maybe it's a relationship that we can just call er. Uh, maybe it's a career that we can call er. Maybe it's a pattern of life. It could be a destructive pattern of life. We just call that all that er, right? And, and God has been speaking to him, and you love texting that verse to him or to her. You're like, oh, I'm going to Hebrews 11 them right now. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Ding! Right? And you're just like, man, Hebrews 11 is the best verse to send. It's, it's funny. It is. I know. Because I love sending it too. I'm like, Tommy, here we go. Right? But it, it's, um, it's not as fun to receive. Let's be real. Because we like Ur a lot. Ur is really familiar. Like we, we know our way around Ur. We've become tethered to Ur. In fact... We can't imagine life outside of the city limits of Ur. And so we like to send that verse, but we don't like to receive that verse. Yet, if you want to get into transformation, I think you do. We've got to understand how faith works. And so this is what we see. Abram, his story is one of my favorite stories. I've studied it extensively. It's an incredible story. And it's not all just right here. God keeps inviting him. Not, not just this one time. Just like in your life. Some of us left Ur. And we would call that portable church, or we'd call that a level of giving back then was Ur. And he invited us from Ur. And guess what? He's going to continue to invite us to leave Ur. He's going to continue to show up and speak to us to help us walk in greater levels of faith. Abram, he, he didn't see it, yet he started walking anyway. That's faith. Faith believes God. Faith starts walking into the unknown that is known by God. Some of you remember our advanced commitment night. Uh, show of hands, how many of you were here when the stage wasn't even here? We didn't have carpet or walls. You were here at Advanced Commitment Night. There's just a few of us. All right, you guys remember that night. N none of this was here, guys. This building was empty. There was nothing here except faith. And on that one-way ticket to transformation that we call the commitment card, we wrote numbers in there that scared us. We wrote numbers on those cards that required faith, not understanding. We had no idea how. None of us understood. But we believed. And that was a marker moment for you. That was a marker moment for us as a church. We took those commitment cards and we put them into the wooden box. And I kind of wanted to take my card back out of the box. Erase the number, <laughs> write a different number on there, right? I'm, I'm human like you. But man, what was that? That was faith. That was us leaving the city limits of Ur. We believed God, and God has used that. Now, some of you, because you've told me you, you love the store Ikea, you just love it. And you love to talk about Ikea. You love to post about Ikea. You just, you're just into Ikea. And um, I've been not super vocal about Ikea, but kind of vocal that I'm not, I'm not down with Ikea. I don't like Ikea. Uh, so um, if that offends you, I just, I just don't like Ikea. I don't like being lost. And I'm lost the whole time I'm there in Ikea. And... Um, the other thing that I don't like about Ikea, and maybe Ikea is watching this, uh, I think what Ikea means, the literal translation in, in Swedish is some assembly required. I think that's what it means. <laughs> it, and so, you guys, we've been there. We pay good money for the thing, whatever the thing is. Doesn't matter, the thing. You load up the thing if you can find your way out of the store, and you, you get home to your apartment, condo, house, whatever, and then you got work to do. Well, I'm not into that. See, I want it done for me. I paid them to assemble it. And then the worst part, come on, you open up the instruction thing. You, have you seen their instructions? I don't even know what it is. 
So then I get mad, I start sinning. So I don't go to Ikea, right? I just don't go to Ikea. It's just not a good scenario. I don't like some assembly required. Now that's fun to talk about. It's kind of funny to talk about when it comes to furniture, but we slip into that mindset when it comes to our life with God. Some of you are new Christians, brand new. Some of you are kicking the tires on what might this be that I'm going to say yes to. I want you to understand life with God. I want you to understand life in the kingdom of God. I want you to understand this relationship with Jesus. you got to understand he's not going to do it all for you. Like I, I would say transformation, you got to understand there is some faith required. And we see this in so many stories. You see this in your own life, but you definitely see it in Abram's life. There is some faith required. Not tons of faith. Thankfully, Jesus said we just need a mustard seed. We don't need boatloads of faith. That's really good news. But some faith is required. We got to go from. We got to go from. We got to go from. I don't know what you need to go from right now, but I can promise you, if you are open to the Spirit of God in your life, He's probably like talking to you about some things. For some of you, He's shouting, man. He's been shouting for a long time. It's time to go from that thing, from that relationship, from that thing that just keeps pulling you to a lesser story, to a story that's about self-preservation, to a story that's about like being tethered to the things of this world. God's been talking to you. Well, here's the deal. You need faith. We need faith. We got to go from, we got to go from, we got to go from, we got to go from the familiar. At times we got to go from what's safe. Man, talk about what isn't popular. We, we got to go, we got to go from the, the current of culture. We gotta go, we gotta go from control. You wanna talk about an American idol? Guys, we love control. No? So it was just the last service? Just the 9 a.m. I, I agree. I, I, well, yeah, it is just the 9 a.m. You guys are good though. You guys don't deal with control at all, do you? Yeah, right. And, and so yeah, we, we need to go from these things, trying to organize our lives, trying to spreadsheet your life to where you don't even need God to show up. If the Holy Spirit is the comfort, that implies that you need comfort. Well, you need comfort outside of Ur. We need comfort as we say yes. We need comfort as we go from. What is God calling you to go from? Well, you're going to need some faith. How do we live or continue to live stories of transformation? First, your faith. Secondly, God's faithfulness. God's faithfulness. Two key phrases in these four verses. The first one is go from. That's all about Abram's faith. The second phrase uh, you can't miss it. As you guys start to read the Bible and study the Bible, just look for reoccurring phrases. I, I like the printed Bible because I can underline it and circle it and highlight it and mark it up and do all that stuff. I can come back to it. You do what you want, but that's what I do. It's very helpful. And I want you to see these two phrases. Go from is all about Abram's faith, but the second phrase is I will, which is all about God's faithfulness. Now let's compare these two phrases. In careful study, you're going to see some really cool things. Number one, both are in play. Why? This is about transformation. It's about your faith, but it's also about God's faithfulness. But look at the ratio. This is so fascinating to me. This go from is mentioned one time in these four verses. I will is mentioned six times. Check this out, right? I'm going to put it in bold. And when we get to it, I want you to say it out loud. It's going to be redundant. You're not going to like it, but just do it anyway. All right, so here we go. The Lord has said to Abram, go from your country, your people, and your father's household to the land. Show you. Say it again. Make you into a great nation. And? And? Make your name great, and you will be a blessing. Bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you will curse, right? And all the peoples of the earth will be blessed through you. So Abram went as the Lord had told him. If you're Abram, you're like, uh, God, I got it. Six times? It's kind of a lot. Or did Abram need it? Let's be real. I could have used 10, 15. But here's what you can't miss in this story. There is a one to six ratio between Abram's faith and God's faithfulness. If, you're, if you want to get into transformation, and I hope that you do, this ratio is his story, and this ratio is our story. There's a little bit of Abram's faith, but there's a whole lot of God's faithfulness. This one to six ratio, our faith, over the past two and a half years of never the same, there has been a little bit of our faith involved, you bet. Why? We're not robots. We're not machines. No, this is a relationship. So yeah, there's a little bit of our faith involved, but there is a whole lot of God's faithfulness. In fact, God's faithfulness overshadows our faith by a great degree. I can imagine God saying to Abram, uh, Abram, you need to leave Ur, but you need to know that I won't leave you. As you leave, and you start to walk this walk of faith into the unknown, know that I'll be with you, Abram. I I'll show you the way. I'll bless you. I'll have your back. I'll provide. 
Abram, the destination may be distant. My presence won't be. I will, Abram. I will. I will. As his feet started to hurt, he walked a long way. Like he got his steps in for a lifetime. Right? His Fitbit was going nuts. Right? As his feet hurt from traveling, I believe he probably was hearing in his heart, Abram, I will. That phrase just echoing, reverberating in his heart and in his mind as he wondered, did I make the biggest mistake of my life? The same thing, Summer, you are wondering right now because in faith you've left Ur. Maybe it was last night, maybe it was this morning, maybe it was on the way to church. And you're wondering, I, I don't know how to do life outside of Ur. Did I make the biggest mistake of my life? And I'm praying that in your heart right now you'd hear the voice of God say, I will, I will. I will. As Abram's wife, and it's not in the Bible, but they're real people, I can just imagine. Doesn't say it, I can just imagine. She was probably asking, are we there yet? I mean, it just makes her normal. I mean, can you guys imagine? You move everything, your whole family, to a land God's going to show us at some point when, I don't know when, but we're walking. When he was feeling like a fool, because sometimes faith feels like that. I believe in his heart he was hearing, Abram, I will, I will. I will, I will, I will. The past two and a half, really three years, that John I will phrase in my spirit has been so key. Man, it's been clutch. It's been so important, guys. There's been so many moments. You just got to understand, like, I know I'm up here, but I'm, like, with you. I'm made out of the same stuff you guys are made out of. Um, there's been so moments where I've been scared to death over the past three years. Uh, I wanted to share some stories that I've been reflecting on this past week where God has just spoken to my heart. These John I will moments, I, I call them. One of the moments was uh, we'd been, I've been prayer walking around this building for years. Uh, not because I don't have anything to do, uh, but I, I just think prayer can get a lot done. And, and I'm practical that way. And so I've walked around this building a lot. Some of you know this used to be a lazy boy. Any of you ever buy a Lazy Boy or furniture in here? Just curious. Some of you. Yeah, Lou. What's up, Lou? Good to see you, bud. What did you, you buy? Just curious. Lazy Boy or sofa? Lazy Boy. Lazy boy. Nice. And uh, sorry, I just needed to talk to him about that. And <laughs> so this used to be a furniture store, and this building wasn't for sale, and we kept prayer walking around it, and I, I just thought this should be a church. Don't you? Didn't you? I mean, it's just the location is just so nice. You know, Taco Bell's right there, and you know, like I just, it just should be a church, you know, it's just right here. We didn't even know about Woodman's yet, you know. And so we just prayed and, and w walked around it, even just as ridiculous as laying hands on the brick right outside there after hours so we didn't get in trouble. Lay hands on the brick. God, this needs to be a church. And we decided to take another step of faith from Ur and call the owner. Now, it wasn't for sale. And it was occupied by Lazy Boy, but we called the owner. And I thought, this is going to be bad. Uh, you know, he's just going to tell us, no, they're in a 50-year lease. It's over, you know. But the owner on the other end of the line said, this is crazy. You're calling me today because in two weeks I've been planning to put this up for sale. Yeah. In my heart, felt that, John, I will. He said, in fact, I know it's August, but December 31st, Lazy Boy's lease is up and they're moving out. I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. The, the next step of leaving Ur um, was the rezoning process. Some of you are in commercial real estate. You understand how big of a deal that is for a village like this. We love Bloomingdale. From here, lived here forever. And, um, you know, that's a lot of tax revenue. I had well-meaning pastors tell me, uh, John, they're not going to change the tax codes. <laughs> and I'm like, well, thank you. I feel very encouraged after this phone call. <laughs> and they just said they're not going to rezone it. And... I have many pastors that have told me their story of how projects like this totally failed and crumbled because of the rezoning. We felt like this was a mountain that God would need to move. And I will never forget what it felt like to be sitting there in Village Hall in Bloomingdale. I felt like I was in trouble because like, I had a traffic ticket or something. So it was a weird feeling. We were in there. It was like very official. The, you know, the village trustees are up there. And I was like, man, um, me and Tommy and Justin and John, our lead team, we we're sitting there and this whole thing was coming to a vote. And if this got turned down, it's over. And I just felt like so much of our future was hanging in the balance of a vote. And I got to tell you guys, I was overwhelmed. I was. I had chest pains. I was afraid. Um, 
They wouldn't even let me give a sermon, so I couldn't even like talk to them about it. It was just like, <laughs> and, um, and I'll never forget what that felt like. And they called it to a vote, and I'll never forget the first person. I, I, I know who he is. I remember him. I remember hearing the words, and it went, yes, 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 yes. Unanimous yes to rezone this thing so that we could actually build a church. And there was an I will, John, I will, I will. It's amazing, amazing, amazing. <laughs> Shortly after that, we closed on the building and they gave us the key, they gave me and Tommy, me and Tommy the keys. We're a bunch of knuckleheads. We got the keys to a building like this. <laughs> and, and so we come in here and we close and Tommy's like, dude, God is all over this. I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, do you not know what today is? I'm like, well, well, no, I know what today is. He's like, no, you, you don't know what the date is. I'm like, well, what are you talking about? He's like, today is January 26th. I'm like, all right. He's like, John, 1986, January 26th? That's when the Bears won the Super Bowl. He's like, God is, God is in this story. And so Tommy is very deep, if you're wondering. He is very deep. And, um, but that's the way we see God in life. A lot of times it's, it's through sports. And so we're like, man, God is all over this. I think for Tommy, that was a Tommy I will moment. And and then just a little bit after that, man, we went public. We're, we're trying to raise $7 million, and maybe that's nothing for you or something. I'm just telling you, that felt like might as well have been a billion dollars. Uh, we're not a wealthy church, man. And I'm just like, I, where's this going to come from? How's this going to happen? And we went public, very public, with that number. And I felt so scared. I'm like, here we go. We've made a multi-million dollar mistake. There's like no back, we own it now. And now we're telling our people we need to pay for it. Like, how's that going to work? And it, so, I mean, you can just imagine all that I was feeling. And chest pains and all that. And we had a gap of a million dollars. And I was discouraged. I was looking for like, where in the parking lot can I dig a hole and bury myself? Uh, they'll understand. Um, where's this million dollars going to come from? We were already a year into the campaign. A family that hadn't been attending our church. Uh, they don't attend our church now, but they attended our church for a very, very brief mo moment. They, uh, they sent an email in and they said, hey, we'd like to meet with John and Tommy. Which is usually code for the music is too loud and Tommy's pants are too tight. So, <laughs> I, you know, and sometimes it's both. And in that situation, I'm like, can you pick one? Because I can't solve both. He's going to wear what he's going to wear, but... We can turn the music. So, so, it, so we, we take the meeting and, and we sit around the table and they, we had no idea what they wanted to talk about. And like, hey, God has put a number on our hearts that we're supposed to not commit but give and we're actually going to give it like today. It's like, okay, that doesn't happen. And they slid across the table a, one of those commitment cards. Now, I, I've never done this before, so I didn't know what, what do you do. Do you look at it? Do you not look at it? I didn't want to be rude. What do you do? Do you open the gift in front of people? Do you, not, you don't know what to do, right? So I'm like, thank you. And I just kind of sat there and like, no, open the card. I'm like, okay, I'll open the card. So I open the card and the number on it, it's just, it didn't. And I, I said, well, certainly this is a mistake. I'm like, do you guys, do you know what number you wrote on your card? They're like, oh no, we, we know what number. And all of a sudden I'm just overwhelmed, tears running down my face. And I slide it over to Tommy. He looks at it deer in headlights. And we both got on our knees in that office. And I said, I'm sorry to these people, but we have to worship Jesus right now. And we just cried and we laughed. And we just, we cried and laughed some more. And just in our hearts was this, John, I will. Tommy, I will. I will. And that gap was closed in such a miraculous way that only God could close a gap. You guys got to understand the story that you're seated in the middle of a little bit of our faith, but a whole bunch of God's faithfulness. And so what I, I want us to do as a church, we, we, we got to get this right, is today on the Celebration Sunday, I want us to give a standing ovation to the only one worthy of a standing ovation. His name is Jesus. So online at Watch Parties here in the house, if we would stand and applaud King Jesus for his work <laughs> and faithfulness. <laughs> Come on, make some noise. Let's go. <laughs> oh, man. 
All right, you guys can have a seat. If you were at a watch party, sorry, your neighbors think you're really weird now. You're in your driveway applauding, making a lot of noise. Oh, man. So some of you, uh, you're just brand new to mission. And I, I want you to know, never the same is done. But God's work in and through this church is far from over. We believe that. We've been saying for a really long time, we are not done. We're not done. Why? Because we just like to work real hard? Because we're scrappy? Well, yeah, both those things are true. But we're not done because Christ has yet to return. We are not done. And so, you know, we've been working on today for months, kind of planning this out. And so we thought, what I, what I think would be a really great way to like really celebrate the ending of a campaign is to start a, another one next week. <laughs> so we're going to do that. All right. And I know, Brad, you're not sure. You're like, do I applaud this or do I not applaud this? So some of you just got like sick to your stomach because of what the last campaign cost you. Uh, so let me, just, let me just talk to you real quick. So we, we re for reals, we really are starting a new campaign next week. We're just going to stay on the edge. We're never going back to Ur as a church. No, we're just not doing it. We're going to stay on the frontier. That's where it's at. Okay, so but let me tell you about this campaign because I think you're really going to like it. Uh, I, I really do. So it's, um, it's, it's, it's not two years long. Good, right? It's four weeks long. It's going to be through the month of November. The goal isn't $7 million. Okay, some of you are like, oh, thank Jesus. Um, the goal is $150,000. Um, not one dollar is staying in this house. Every single dollar given, we're giving away. And we're giving it away to three specific things. Three causes for the working poor, the fatherless, and the trafficked. That's what we're going to do. And we are, we are so fired up about this. There's something called the Holiday Gift Mart that serves the working poor in this community. Um, we're we're going to fund that. I believe that in faith. Um, there's an incredible organization called GRIP Youth Outreach. It works in the worst, worst neighborhoods in Chicago. You're going to hear a lot more about this in the, in the coming weeks. Um, mainly fatherless kids. We're going to partner with them in a big way. I'm believing in faith. And Naomi's house that's doing something about the 24,000 women in sex trafficking in Chicago right now. We're going to do something about this injustice that breaks the heart of God. And so over the next, I thought you guys are going to love, we're calling it B4. We're going to B4. We're not going to be against. We're going to B4 the things that are on the heart of God over the next four weeks. Every dollar given, we're going to give away. What do you guys think? Does it sound like something you want to do? I thought you'd like it. I thought you'd like it. I thought you'd like it. So... <clears throat> Uh, this isn't a building campaign. This is a blessing campaign. We're just going to do some stupid stuff. We're going to give all our money away over the next four weeks. And so uh, we got a little video to set it up, and then Tommy and the band are going to give us a song uh, before we're done today. Check out the video. You know what never fails? Let me first tell you about what always fails. Things like hate and fear. Things like cynicism and skepticism, those things fail, as does destruction and discord and division, along with self-infatuation and self-preservation. Those things fail. But there is one thing that never fails, and it's the one thing I'm asking you and inviting you to be for, and that is love. Love never fails. Jesus, he said some provocative things about love, like love your enemies and love your neighbor as yourself. There are three groups of neighbors I'm asking you to love as yourself, the working poor, the fatherless, the trafficked. They are our neighbors as well. They have names, they have stories, and they have a future. What if instead of being against everything and everyone, we instead rallied together our collective capital and social capital to be for these neighbors? As we give away $150,000, every dollar will declare that we've taken aside with the one thing that will not fail, love.